You are watching the most interactive professional wrestling discussion show on the internet. WWE Impact Wrestling. ROH Wrestling. Pro Wrestling at its finest on In The Hot Seat with your host, Ford Miners Project. What's going on guys and welcome to this week's What's going on guys and welcome to this week's episode for in the hot seat. Of course as always I got a great show lined up for you guys and I'm being joined by my two guests at this time. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh hi, I'm Emil Kitty Cat here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Boston <laughs> Fan seventy nine and thank you so very much. First of all, Fort Minor Project, uh, for inviting me back and thank you for making your show a part of my day. Oh, no problem. And with the first topic, I'm going to kick things off here, and that is going into with John Laurinaitis. And, of course, as of late, we've seen him be both Raw and SmackDown general manager since his win at WrestleMania 28. And I wanted to give you guys thoughts on and how you feel about that. Do you see John Laurinaitis being a long-term general manager like Teddy Long in this run from 2004 all the way to 2012? Or do you see John Laurinaitis being a, not a long-term, but a short-term uh, general manager? I'm going to kick things off here with Kara on this one. Um, Honestly, I think he's doing a real good so far, bringing a bunch of the um, bigger superstars back. But um, I'm really not liking uh, the bit of, he's calling it people power. I don't really consider people power. Because, really, um, if you listen to the crowd, they're not exactly happy about what he's doing. All right, Boston fan, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, basically, um, I will go off on saying that he is good for the company, like it or not. Um, you know, and that's the thing is, um, that is his character. You're not, re he's a heel uh, manager slash in, uh, raw general manager, SmackDown general manager. That's his job, to be the heel, you know. And to me, he's doing a damn good job of it with, uh, you know, I mean, he has grown on me, actually. Um, I've grown from hating him to actually liking what he's doing, you know, as far as, um, you know, creating controversy, first of all, between him and Teddy Long uh, leading into their match at WrestleMania. Um, you know, now, you know, now he's just like, you know, kind of like, you know, playing head honcho hotshot, you know, with... Uh, you know, being here and everywhere like a chicken with his head chopped off with David Otunga. And, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, overall, and plus, like I said, you know, with, uh, with him bringing, I don't know if it was him that was solely responsible, but, um, but of course, the, the, you know, the thing with him and, um, you know, Brock Lesnar, uh, you know, it's just makes a perfect heel combo all together, um, kind of like a, you know, a triple threat almost. Um, you know, at least from the way we saw it last night, but he is good for the company, dude. Yeah, and with me, honestly, I have been liking John Laurinaitis, and in the beginning, I didn't really care for him too much, but since he's been both Raw and SmackDown general manager, I have been liking him as of late, and he's been bringing guys like Brock Lesnar back, also like The Rock, and as well with Roy Tensai, aka A-Train, coming back, so I have been enjoying him, and I don't know if we're going to have uh, a long-term run with John Laurinaitis. We might have that. We'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with that. So I think that would be pretty cool to have John Laurinaitis be as like a long-term general manager for both shows. And I do agree that it is something fresh and something new. So um, maybe we'll get to see Teddy Long be in the Hall of Fame maybe by next year. And I'll get to see him there for WrestleMania 29 and end his career there, so I think that would be pretty cool, so that's pretty much it with me, with my thoughts on John Laurinaitis and being Raw and SmackDown general manager, and now going into the next thing and the next topic that I do have here, and that is going with Batista, and with this, I was hoping to get maybe a Batista return and have a mark out video moment with that for Batista, of course that didn't happen, so I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on Batista, and do you think he should come back in the WWE? and have a year run, if you will, sort of like what Brock Lesnar is having right now. And what are your thoughts on that? And I'm going to kick things off here with Kara on this one. Yeah, I think um, if Batista were to come back, it would 
um, bring a little more attention to the WWE. And I think it would be really interesting to see a Brock Lesnar-Batista uh, feud on that. Um, so, and honestly, about the whole Raw thing is, I, I didn't believe that he was going to come back. Part of me really wanted him to. But, you know, WWE has pulled this kind of stuff a lot of times with, in different scenarios. So, I really didn't expect much out of that at all. You know, it really doesn't make a difference to me one way or another. I mean, he had a good, and I mean a good, solid career with the WWE, going from, you know, like tag team champions to world heavyweight champion uh, to WWE champion. I mean, he's a multi-time champion. He's a, he was a beast. He was a monster. He was an animal. And um, he, you know, uh, I mean, I'd be perfectly fine if he didn't come back. Um, you know, maybe I'd like to see him come back. Um you know, maybe for one more match or maybe a couple more matches, be part-time, kind of like, you know, maybe with uh, maybe something along the lines of uh, Brock Lesnar, maybe have some good uh, some good feuds to maybe close out his career, you know, maybe between Brock or The Undertaker, maybe with Triple H, um, or even, I know maybe some people might be sick of it, but, um, you know, John Cena. But uh, overall, you know, like I said, it doesn't bother me one bit whether he comes back or not because, you um, you know, it just it kind of just leaves a t- sour taste in your mouth when um, the way he went out. You know, you want him to have a good, solid um, ending, um, even though not everybody in the WWE or TNA or whatever wrestling company is going to have a storybook ending. But, um, you know, I would kind of like to see him cement maybe one more run, um, to, you know, to be perfectly honest. But either way, I'm, you know, happy. I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll be happy for him either way, whether he chooses to... Uh, you know, leave, or, you know, whether he doesn't come back, or whether he does come back. Yeah, with me, I think it would be pretty cool to have Batista back, of course, he's definitely one of my favorites, and I was hoping for him to come back this week during Raw, but of course, that did not happen, and we did not get to see that at all, so it is entirely up to him, and if Batista wants to come back into the WWE, I think it would be pretty cool to see him face some of the new guys, that are around that he did not get to face when he was around and I really enjoyed his matches with The Undertaker and the ones that he had at WrestleMania 23 with The Undertaker and with the rematch at Backlash. I thought both matches were great and both had a good program to me in my personal opinion. Definitely one of my favorite matches out of the two as well. And he did have some other good matches with guys like Shawn Michaels uh, with Edge and just to name a few with some of those guys that he did get to work with. So it was cool seeing Batista and as well being a part of Evolution as well. Uh, we did get to see him in that group. So definitely, of course, one of my favorite stables there with that, no doubt. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to me and Batista. So it's entirely up to him if he does want to come back to the WWE, even have a one-year deal like Brock Lesnar or something like that. And then just end it off there if he wants to too as well. So I think that would be pretty cool to have him come back as with one more one in the WWE in my personal opinion. And going into the next topic that I do have here, and this is a little response to Gavin Knotts on this one, and talking about general managers and how there aren't enough managers, I should say, in the WWE. And I wanted to give you guys thoughts on this. And uh, I believe we lost Kara, so I'm going to kick things off here for Boston fan. What are your thoughts on managers in the WWE and giving the response to Gavin Knotts on his video with managers, and how do you feel about that? Uh, the um, the deal with the managers, and I did watch uh, Gavin Knotts, and for everybody that does not know Gavin Knotts, first of all, let me give take the time and give him just a quick plug. Uh, find him at, find him at www. Uh, youtube.com slash user slash gavinots and um, you know he made a very good video um, about the managers and no there is not enough um, you know wrestling managers the art form of manager is it's definitely not there the only person that right now that's really pulling it off is Vicky Guerrero and she's doing a damn good job of it I think she's going to go down in history as being a damn good manager uh, being right up on top of uh you know, uh, the women of the, being the managers, such as uh, Miss Elizabeth, or for that matter, even Sensational Sherry, because um, she has that heel thing to her, uh, you know, with Jack Swagger and uh, D- Dolph Ziggler, which, by the way, I do not see why they lost last night, but that's another subject for another day. Um, but no, the art form of managers is not relevant in the WWE anymore. 
at least, um, you know, like I said, not from my standpoint, like I said, the only person that's doing it is Vicky. And um, we definitely need more uh, managers in the WWE um, because back in like the 80s and the 90s, we had so many good managers. Mr. Fuji, Bobby the Brain Hannon, the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, uh, Virgil, um, and for everybody that remembers Virgil, uh, you know, Paul Bearer, uh, you know, and the list goes on and on. Classy Freddie Blassie even. Um, you know, a lot of great managers. And it's, it's uh, you know, there's nothing in the WWE anymore like that, except for, like I said, Vicky Guerrero. And it's really tough to see. All right, so I do believe we do got Kara back, and I wanted to give your thoughts, if you can, on how do you feel about managers in the WWE? Do you feel that there's not enough, or do you think there should be more? How do you feel about that, if you want to give your thoughts on managers in the WWE and in response to Gavin Ox? Um, yeah, I think that there should be a lot more managers with this. And I kind of want to bring up, um, if you guys remember from a couple of weeks ago, there was a scene with, um, or a promo with Mark Henry and Abraham Washington, I think it was. Um, and I think that if, if Abraham Washington were to be his manager, that would bring, a, like, a lot of um, fun because we need more managers in the WWE. So I feel like there isn't enough. Yeah, to me personally, there definitely isn't enough managers in the WWE to me. And I like what they were doing with Tyson Kidd and having him have guys like Matt Stryker, having guys like Armando Estrada come back, and guys like that help him out, and, you know, I think that was pretty cool that they did that. I think they should bring guys like that back and help out the other guys, too, as well as a new and coming up soon as well, so I think that would be pretty cool and definitely should be more managers. Uh, with that, I do think it would be pretty cool to have maybe Ric Flair come back, even though he is in TNA, and he is managing a little bit and he hasn't really been doing that too much and helping out gutter and everything but technically rick flair is retired from the wwe so why would they bring him back yeah but you, yeah i was just gonna say though on that side note about rick flair you'll never never know with him because here's the thing he's been in and out of wwe how many times now in wwe because of the legend that he is in the world of professional wrestling, they've, ta they've taken him back time and time again. And just because, you know, he's either A, retired from WWE, or B, he's, um, uh, you know, maybe with, uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. And now that he's with T, you know, of course, for the past couple of years, he's been with TNA. You're never going to know because here's the thing. Um, you know, going back to uh, like when Shawn Michaels had the whole presentation for him in the ring. And he, you know, because he was the one that retired Ric Flair. Um, you know, going, you know, going on that by saying that, um, you know, we thought that Ric Flair was completely done with wrestling, but then he shows up in like, what was it like Japan wrestling before he hit up the, uh, the, uh, impact wrestling. So you'll never know with Ric Flair. I mean, he could possibly come back for one more run, but I think he's got his hands full of TNA. Um, you know, because of course, you know, his old time buddies are there, Sting and Hulk Hogan. Um, I'm sure you might want to go out with them. So, but who, who knows with Ric Flair, anything's possible. The, that old man's going to kick it until, you know, he falls face first in his grave, you know? Yeah, that's true. But he hasn't really been doing too much over there in TNA and he hasn't really been managing all that much over there. I just thought it would be pretty cool to have Ric Flair back and be as a manager role. I don't want to see him wrestle. Definitely not. But Having him be a manager role or doing something backstage, to me personally, I think that would be cool for Ric Flair to come back and do that and have a last one in that and help out some of the guys on the roster too as well, especially with the new and upcoming ones that will be coming out from uh, FCW soon. Yeah, and that was a really good discussion and going into the next topic and actually I believe that's pretty much it with all the topics that I do have planned for this week's episode for In The Hot Seat, so I appreciate you guys coming in on the show. And with that being said, is there any shout-outs that you want to give for that matter, or anything else that you want to give your final thoughts on and talk about anything else before we end things with the show here? Um, I actually do have a shout-out. Um, I have this uh, fellow Jackaholic, and I just want to give her a quick shout-out. Um, so I just want to say hey to you, uh, Dirty South L.E. Love. Um, 
All right, sounds good. I'll definitely leave links down below too as well for that one for your shout out as well. And boss of friend, do you have any shout outs too as well that you want to give out to before we end things here on the show? Absolutely. I'm going to, dude, uh, you know what I'm going to say. Dude, I am going to plug this Sunday live at 3 p.m. Ustream.com. Uh, you're going to hear Simon Nickel Diamond, good old SMD, the host with the most. Myself, Boston Fan 79 V2, Fort Minor Project, John Ferrer, What Pisses Me Off 710. We are going to do it live for the pay per view pre show for lockdown. It is going to be awesome. So, for all of you people who are listening and to our special guest who is also in the hot seat with us today, you know, make sure if you know if you guys want to come be, be with us, ask us some questions, maybe about whatever subject that um, you feel in the world of professional wrestling. Um, get our opinions. Be like I said, live 3 p.m. Be there. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to rock it, man. All right. And, of course, I will leave those links down below for everyone to check them out. And I will try my best to be a part of the podcast, which will be this Sunday. So, guys, do not miss that. And definitely be sure to leave a like on this video and comment on what we talked about this week on In the Hot Seat. I want to thank you guys for coming on in for the show. And that about does it for this week's episode for In the Hot Seat, of course. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. And with that being said, I will... See you guys on the next episode and as well for my next video. And until then, I'll talk to you guys later. See you guys. Peace.